Welcome to Construct Done Quick, a series where I teach you to make a full game in a short amount of time. This time we're going back to my childhood in school and playing one of my favourite flash games which is Line Rider. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is we're going to actually start with our input devices. We need two input devices for this game. First one's going to be our mouse. This will allow us to click and place our lines. And the second one is going to be our keyboard, which just can be used to move the camera about. We're going to insert our pixel or our sprite that we're going to use to draw the lines. So hit sprite, pull this pixel, and just click anywhere. I recommend resizing this to about 5 by 5 That's the size of each pixel. Once you've got that, we can just fill that in black, and there's our pixel set up. We just need to take this pixel and move it to the side. And then on the right hand side, we can edit the behaviors. And we just need the physics behavior on for this one today. Once that's in there, we're going to go to the physics settings. We're going to make it immovable. We're going to set the collision mass to be a circle. Now, this one might be a bit strange while we're using circles and not squares for a square object. And this is just so as we're drawing and we're playing the game, the character is not likely to get hit in one of those jagged sort of corners of the square. So you could use a circle pixel. I think the square pixels look better, but the circle collisions make it so we're less likely to get stuck. We also want to drop the friction, so our character keeps moving when on these circles, and the elasticity so we don't bounce as much. That's up, we can move to our event sheets. I'm going to add a new condition. I'm going to say mouse. I'm going to look for mouse down. I'm going to check for the left click is down. If it is, we want to use our system to create an object, and this is going to be our pixel. And what we're going to do is we're going to create mouse.x and mouse.y. So we're currently position the mouse as we're clicking, as well we're going to place one of those pixels. We're also going to add another event. I'm going to say mouse is cursor over the object. I'm going to check pixel. We're going to also add another condition to this. I'm going to say mouse, mouse button down, the right mouse button. And if that's the case, what we're going to do is take that pixel and destroy it. So now we've got an undo button as well. So we can click to place stuff and click to destroy it. Finally, we can add our keyboard and we can say on key pressed R. R being for reset in most games. We can go down to system and restart layout. So this is a complete undo of everything on the screen. So we should have a simple little drawing tool now that allows us to place down our pixels and remove them. So I can draw and I can place these down. You see if I go too fast, they're quite spread apart. If I take my time with them, we get a nice thick line. And I'm also able to go back the way and delete it as well. And press R to remove everything on there. Just a bit of a side note, if you make the physics immovable, just turn that off. You actually get something that's quite soothing and relaxing to play around with, which is just all these blocks that are pushing off each other and just falling. So not something we're using in today's day, but something that I found quite fun to play around with, so you might want to do the same. But for our game, we do need that immovable to be on. Now we need to add our line rider character. So we're going to insert a new character or a new sprite. Scroll down, I'm going to call him Rider. I'm going to click somewhere on the screen for him to appear. And for this, I've just found a sprite online that I've just edited slightly. In my character here. And in terms of setting up the hitbox, we can set up a hitbox if we really want. But I actually found that we're going to use the physics tool to change this and actually make this a circle as well and explain a bit more about why we're doing that. So I just do set to bounding box at this stage. So now our character's in there, we need to be able to switch between our edit mode and our play mode. Now, when we're editing, we also want to be able to look around, so we're actually going to add a quick camera. So insert a new object. This is going to be a sprite again. I'm going to call it camera. Click anywhere, and I'm just going to make a really quick camera using the box shape. And we'll have a lens as well, like so. So really, really terrible looking camera, but it does the job for today. I'm just going to resize this down to be quite small. I'm going to place it roughly in the middle. Now on this camera, I'm going to add two behaviors. First behavior is going to be the scroll to. So we follow where the camera is. 
And the second one, we're just going to add the eight directions behavior. So we're able to move our camera around using the keyboard. Now on this left hand side, we just need to make sure that the set angle is set to no. I also quite liking the speed up to 500 and setting the acceleration up to 10,000 and the deacceleration up to 10,000 as well, meaning that we get a quick start stop as we're moving it around. Finally, with the camera, what we can do is also just make it invisible so we don't see it. And again, this is something that will be appearing when we're editing, so we're able to look around the whole screen. Just going to add a global variable. And it's going to be a Boolean, and it's going to be called editing. And it's going to be a really, really big part to check actually what we're able to do at what point. So now what we can do is we can say system is Boolean set editing. If we are editing, what do we want to be able to do? Well, first thing we want to do is we actually want to make the camera. And we want to set enabled for the eight directions, so we're able to move the camera about. So let's enable that. We also want to take our camera again. And we want to make sure that we're using the scroll to on the camera and we're following that as well. And then we also want to change some stuff on our player. So we can click on our player on the right hand side. We're going to start by adding some behaviors. So the first one that we need for this one is scroll to as well. So when we're playing the game, we're actually following our main character. And the other one we need is the physics behavior, which we're going to change some options for in just a bit. So we actually want to take our player. And while we're editing, we don't want to have the physics on. So the physics don't play a part in interrupting our character. So we disable that. We also don't want the cameras to follow our player at this stage. So we can go down to our scroll to and disable that as well and then we also want to reset the player's position so to find out your player's starting position just click on your player on the right hand side and these are the two position values so mine's at 13887 I'm going to copy this then go to rider set position copy those in and then just move that 87 to the line below so resetting our player wise in the editing mode and we also want to reset the angle. If he's turned at some point during the level, then we want to turn him back to the start. So I'm going to set angle, and this is going to be set to zero, zero being facing right. So now we've got that done, we need to do the flip of this. So we can actually copy and paste this. We're going to right click to invert editing. So now we're saying if we're not editing, what do we want to do? We're just going to swap all these over. So we want to disable the camera and being able to move it. We want to disable the camera following the camera because we actually want to follow the player now. We want our player to actually have physics enabled. We want our rider to be the one that we're following or our player the one that we're following. And instead of setting the position of the player, we can actually set the camera back to its default position at the start. So again, just click on the camera on the right hand side, copy the position, and then we're just going to change this. So I'm just going to go back, back to the camera, and then we're going to look for set position. I'm just going to do the same again. So I've copied it in and I'm just changing that one to be on the second line. And we don't need to set the camera angle, so we can just delete that line. So now we've got rules if we're editing and if we're not editing, we need a way to switch between them. So I've just done this as a space bar. So keyboard on key pressed space and then hit done. And then all I'm going to do is do system toggle boolean editing. So we're just going to switch between the two when we're hitting the space bar. The final thing you might want to do is actually just take this is editing, copy it and add it to both mouse buttons. So this means that when you're editing, you can actually only edit when you are in the edit mode. You can't add extra stuff while the game is running. You might want to leave that off. You want to be able to add stuff as your character's moving, but staying true to the original game, I've kept it like that. So once we restart layouts, we also want to just make sure that our system we just want to set the boolean of editing back to true so anytime we restart and we get rid of everything our player is just not falling through the air we're back into that edit mode so that all set up we're nearly there to start testing this i said we had a couple of physics settings to change with our player so what we're going to do is first of all change the collision mesh to a circle now with some playing around with this i found that circle actually worked the best and i got the best movement it worked best on the ramps you can play around with these options as well. Density, I put this up to 100, giving our character a little bit more weight. Friction, I set to zero, so nothing's slowing our player down. 
Obviously, the natural curves is going to stop the player from progressing anyway or slowing the player down. But we don't want the fact that just over time he slows down. Elasticity, this is to do with bouncing. I don't want him to bounce at all. And then linear dampening, slow down motion. Again, I don't want him to slow down. But angular dampening, this is how much he rotates. I set this to 1. Okay, so this will vent him rotating constantly all over the place. Actually, it will stop him rotating quite a lot, but we're still getting that rotation on the ramps. So they're the settings that I recommend, but you might want to play around. If you give this a test now, we should be done. So obviously my characters fail, so all I need to do is just actually go to my editing and set this to true to begin with. Now we give it a second test. And our play doesn't fall, so that's a good start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing a path for him to follow. I go down, he's then going to pick up a new line, like so. And again, if I need to go back over this, I can. If I make a mistake, I can just delete those pixels and get rid of those. I've got the camera, so I'm able to look around the screen and move about. And then if I hit play, our character will go down. He'll fall through and he'll go through at the level. And then I can press R to restart the whole thing. Or if I prefer, I can run it and then hit space to go back to editing mode. So hopefully you've enjoyed this and you've had a go at making this yourself. This is such a great game to go back to and I've really enjoyed playing around with this tutorial. Let me know what other games you'd like to see done quick or what other concepts from other games you'd like to see implemented into Construct. For now, have a lovely day. Comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.